Hello everyone and welcome back to Kentucky Garden Gal. I am Nancy and I am going to give you just a small overview of my home and my gardening style. I am in South Central Kentucky and I'm a zone 7. I know that we have a lot of new subscribers so I just wanted to do a little introduction and tell you a little bit about what I like. So I have been in my current home for more than 30 years. It is an 1880 folk Victorian and um, I like very lush gardens. It is early April here in South Central Kentucky, so you can just see a lot of things are coming out. But um, I have a very cottage style as far as gardening goes. I like to grow things from seed. I am a single parent, so I do have to be frugal in my gardening practices. So I try to, um, I try to buy things on discount, grow from seed, buy on sale, thrift, do thrifting, just to be able to afford the things that I want. I don't think that um, that not having the money is anything to be ashamed of, but you can certainly work around it and not necessarily have to go out and pay retail. So that's what I do a lot of, and I've done different videos. These are the tulips. These are actually from Walmart, these containers, and they just blend in. Right now I have tulips in them. I'll be planting other things. Um, these are some roses that I planted this year. These are some Dusty Millers that I wintered over. So I just took these out of the greenhouse I need to clean these up just a little bit, put some more plants in them, but these will actually turn out really pretty. And this is my gazebo. Cameron and I, my son, we like to sit out here and uh, have our lunch, a snack or whatever. So anyways, like I said, I just wanted to do a small introduction in case you're new to the channel and kind of show you what, how I garden. I'm a big believer in showing the good, the bad, and the ugly because oftentimes when we see photographs on social media or in magazines, we're just seeing a perfect shot that is literally perfect for just a moment. And the reality is that's not how life works. Uh, we have stumps in our yard. We have items that need to be painted, such as that. And we have weeds. I have tons and tons of weeds. I will get to this just as soon as I can, but I'm trying to get stuff planted up and it often gets ahead of me, but that's okay. I just keep trying. So, um, like I said, I have a very cottage style. I like just a little bit of everything. I recently added this vertical tower from Greenstock and I really, really like it. I have a couple of plants that I need to replace, but other than that, I'm very pleased with this. These are some tulips. I usually buy my tulips in January or February and I just put them in pots or containers and as you can see they do come up. I know that these are fading soon so I just added some snapdragons to these and then those will be right along. These are crepe myrtles that have started to leaf out. This is my cutting garden. These are irises here. What you see with the weeds there, I will actually till this up and this is where the zinnias will go. I need to get those in sooner rather than later. As you can see, I have more of these totes back here and this is how I prefer to grow my herbs because it keeps everything contained. Uh, this is tansy, this is oregano. They've been here for years. They are absolutely no problem whatsoever. I started asparagus in this one. And this one, uh, I am, 
I ordered some trees from the Arbor Day Foundation, so I'm just letting these grow up a little bit before I take them to the farm in East Tennessee. These are some trees that I actually got last year, and this is the white paper birch. These are just looking fantastic. So I will probably actually up pot these really, really soon because I just went today and picked up 50 more trees. So after we get our tote, our raised bed tote planted up, I'll show you what I need to do to the trees that I just picked up. But this is a little garden area. This was my first uh, raised bed. I made it out of cinder block myself. And you can see I haven't got to paint my uh, little frogs there yet. That's on the list. But this is a little garden that I have. And um, looks like there's foxglove and gladiolas and bellflowers, liatris, different things in there. And of course the garden fox. But I just like a little bit of everything, and I just, it doesn't bother me to mix and match it. I think that's just fine, and um, let's go over and look at this clematis. This clematis is just gorgeous. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that. All right, oh, we can check in on the chickens. Let's go say hello to the ladies. There's the chickens. So we'll say hello to them and thank them for the eggs. We are making, Cameron and I are making a crustless quiche for dinner using six fresh eggs from our chickens. So let's go start on our first project. This is a little garden area that I have. It is actually tucked in behind a building. There is a fence on this side, which is my neighbor's. You can tell this just isn't a big area at all, but it's just perfect for container gardening because it's so protected and it's like a microclimate back here. So you see these four beds, which are the food grade uh, totes that have been cut in half. And I started out by putting a lot of straw in each one of them. I have added compost, but it's pretty much just disintegrated. So today, I'm gonna work on just one tote at a time. So I'll do one today, one tomorrow, and so on and so forth. But I'm gonna start with this one. So I had to come in and weed all of the grass out of the straw. And there are some bulbs in there, as you can see, and I'll just sort of leave them where they are. But I did go to our local Lowe's and I bought soil for this. This is what I like to use. So I have gotten two of these 64 dry quarts at our local Lowe's and it does have the fertilizer in there. I think this was, this ran me around $25, $28, something like that. But these two bags should fill up what I need to fill up for my tote. And then we put in our bedding plants. So this is how far the first bag of soil got me. And as you can see, I am definitely going to need the next bag. And I went ahead and brought my water over and brought my plants and brought my supports. So as soon as we get the soil in, we will start planting this up. This is with the second bag in, and you see how I left those tulip bulbs. I don't know if they will bloom, but they'll be there, and they'll be there for next year. So we'll just have those blooms, and let's get planting in this. I have selected my plants, and for this tote, this is going to be tomato, basil, and marigolds. That is companion planting, and let me tell you, when this gets going in the summer, this smells like an Italian kitchen. It smells so good to come out. So let me show you what I have. 
right, here are the marigolds, and this is just, it's called a Bonanza Mixed. And I did buy these at the Amish earlier. They've been in the greenhouse. They do have a little stress to them. However, they've done well. But I do have more marigolds started in the house. This is a dwarf basil minette. And it just looks wonderful. Look how pretty that is. So I'm gonna have a tomato. My tomatoes are Cherokee purples. So I'll have those. And then in the center is a regular sweet basil, which will get really big. And then these will be the dwarfs. And then we'll have the marigolds cascading over the front. Now, here is something that I like to use as supports, I take just an old rusty tomato cage. We have been in this house for 30 years and these tomato cages were here when we moved in. So what I do, I turn them upside down. I put, um, uh, I put a rubber band or a wire or something on the end and then I just stick these little terracotta pots on top, which I will wash this. You can even write on these if you want to. I do have some new plant markers that I will be bringing out and I'll show you those when we get to the end. But you can even write on these. There's just, um, it's your garden. You just make it as whimsical, as um, whatever your style is. You can just do this to suit your style. But this is the first tote that I'll be planning up and then I'll continue to work on these. I have a total of seven, so it'll take me a week to get everything planted up. But let's get these in the ground. don't mind my messy workstation but I wanted to show you the markers that I'm going to be using 
Now, I purchased these from Amazon, and I am not an affiliate with Amazon, but these are 25 copper markers, and then I purchased, I think these were maybe $25 for the box, so about a dollar a piece, and then I also purchased a permanent garden marker, which is different from a Sharpie. The Sharpie does um, eventually wear off, but this is the pen that I'm using, and these were two for ten dollars, and I will put the link to both of them on um, in the description of this video. So this is the marker. This is the first plant marker that I did. I did my marigolds, this is the original tag, which I will keep because I'll save seeds from these, so I wanna know exactly what I have. And I do have uh, some David Austin roses, a lot of roses that I really bought for these to be marked with. So I won't be marking all of my vegetables, but I will do this one. I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna do the French marigold. I am going to do the purple Cherokee tomato. So what you have to do is, this comes with a little cover. You peel this cover off and you will see that underneath it, it of course is copper. So then I'm going to write Cherokee purple tomato. Okay, and then all you do is you take your wire. There's four hooks on the back of it. It goes right down. Oops, just have to get the holes lined up exactly correct and they're not a hundred percent even but that's okay it's not hard to manipulate all right and then you just slide it up and there it goes and your marker is ready so I'm going to do one more for the miniature basil because I do know I am very familiar with just the regular basil so I am going to do one for that and then we will go put these in the garden and we will be finished with that project and we can move on to something else. So this is a Minette, M-I-N-E-T-T-E. -E. And it's a dwarf basil. So there we go, got that one done. Put it on our holder, and then we'll go put these in the garden. I did leave the water running because I do want to give that a good, slow drink of water, but that's how these look, so we'll go check these out in the garden. Okay, you see how nice these look? And I am just going to keep watering this. I'll probably move my water over a little bit, change the direction, but we will let this water for a while and then we'll move on to another project. project that we're going to do today. I picked up 50 trees from our local conservation office uh, today. Now, these have been, she said they were in her Tahoe in a hot vehicle uh, since at least 
last Friday, last Saturday, I think the 12th is when they gave them away. So the first thing that I need to do is to get all of these trees into some water and let them soak. And I have a container here and I have a smaller container here. I also picked up an American persimmon tree. So we will also take this out and get this one, whoops, into some water. So let's just see. That is what it looks like. That is a bare root plant, and down in the water it goes. Now, I do have some compost tea in there. That is why that is a little bit of a different color. Let's see. I thought maybe she had these labeled, but I don't see any labels. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn the camera off, take these out of the bags, get these, in the water and then I'll tell you what I got. Well, as it turns out, there was only one of my trees that were that's labeled and it is the yellow yellow tulip poplar and I will put a picture of that up. Of course, the uh, American persimmon that I had bought. I know that these right here are the lob lolly pine. I know that there is a Kentucky coffee tree and a, let's see, a pin oak. Some of these are pin oaks and I'm not really sure of the rest, but the most important thing is that I get these in some water and I'll probably, and you can see these, they're trying so hard to live. Um, I will let these just stay here for, I don't know, maybe a week, and then I'll move them over into one of those Walmart containers that I showed you with lots of good soil and compost, and I will let those grow there, and then I will pot those up. Maybe, I don't know if it'll be this fall or next fall, but I'll take these to the farm in East Tennessee. So I'm always happy to get 50 free trees. Very excited about that. So I appreciate all of you watching this video. I hope that everyone is having a great day and I will see you in the next one.